Okay, here's the Bauer 1.6 gallon, 135 PSI cordless, two battery packs that I already own, air compressor. And I finally found a way to make this dial turn without the rest of this all turning. I had to pop it loose and now it seems to be working. Here's how quiet this thing is. That's pretty damn quiet. When you can have a conversation literally right next to it. So we're going to let this get up to 135. And then we're going to set this down to 30 or 60. And we're going to practice breathing. They're still going up at the same time. I'm going to try turning this out. The goal is going to be that this starts to stay low while this continues to climb. There it's dropping while this one is rising. That is exactly what I wanted right there. 30 PSI on this side, 2 bar, and watch this go all the way up to 135. And then it should have an automatic shutoff at 135. And then, then I breathe. Actually, I should be able to breathe right now. Let's give it a try. The pressure dropped. I got to dial this in a little bit. I need that to get to 30. Maybe even three times 1545. Right there. Let's try it. God damn, this is going to work. <laughs> okay, but you're wondering what this is all about. Hey guys, it's Mark Vogt with uh, Voltland Outdoors. Yes, I'm still all about archery. Yes, I'm still all about fishing. But one other love that I have in the outdoors, I love diving. I live in the Midwest. I live in northeastern Illinois. Unless you're going to dive Lake Michigan, there's precious few places where you get to use scuba tanks and it actually makes sense. But there's a ton of places where you could go diving and it's only about 10 or 15 feet below the surface. And then, oh God, tanks always seem like overkill. So I started looking at these hookah rigs, these service supplied air, SSA instead of scuba. And they run about $800, these Blue 3 systems, BLU3, go look them up. Um, one thing I don't like about them is they're battery powered and there's no tank. So they last a while, but on every breath, the motor is running to try to compress air to give you your next breath. And I would prefer that there was some kind of a tank there to give me some ballast, some inertia. Um, but what you're looking for in a cheap air compressor is it's gotta be oilless and it's gotta be cordless. So, what I discovered is that my beloved Bauer product line that comes from Harbor Freight Tools actually makes this unit, the 20V Hypermax Lithium. This is completely cordless. Two batteries on the, out, on the back side, um, three amp hours each. Uh, got a built-in air filter. It's oilless, which means the air that it produces is breathable air running through that getting filtered on the inlet side 
passing through the system and then coming into um, high pressure on this side, 135 PSI as possible. You are, we're gonna ratchet the output side down to three atmospheres. Why three atmospheres? In diving at the surface, you got one atmosphere of pressure. You go down 10 meters, that's 30 feet. That's two atmospheres of pressure. You go down another 30 feet, that's three atmospheres of pressure. That's all you're ever gonna need. 15 PSI roughly in an atmosphere, 15, 15, 15, 45 PSI. If we keep this at right around 60, we're short of having at least three atmospheres of pressure pushing the air into our lungs, making it easy to breathe through this little three, this is a quarter inch coiled uh, tubing going into a connector, going into, yes, you guessed it, a second stage regulator. Now I'm gonna continue filming. I'm gonna go in the pool here and we're gonna just swim around and do the uh, first test on it. I've already tested it above water. I'm gonna turn this on, it's gonna keep running. What's gonna happen is this is gonna go up to 135 PSI and then it's gonna shut off. And when it drifts down to around 100 PSI, it turns back on. This is gonna stay at around 60 PSI. I don't have a gauge, which it would be nice to carry a gauge on my wrist or even a gauge Maybe I'll get a gauge that goes right on the, the end of the hose so I can see what my pressure is and get an idea of whether or not it's time to come to the surface. I'm never gonna be down more than 10, you know, more than 10 feet, 15 feet. I'm snorkeling, I'm trying to get below the surface. <sighs> that magical distance where when you hold your breath and you can only hold your breath swimming for about 30 seconds when you're in motion. I can hold my breath for about a minute, minute 10 if I'm motionless, but that's not fair. I, I got about 30 seconds if I'm lucky. At the surface, dive, go down to 10 feet. I've already used 10 seconds trying to get down there. Now I only got 10 seconds down at the bottom, and then I got 10 seconds to try to come up for my next breath. That's a little taxing, but if I could just stay down here, then even with my last couple of breaths on the hose, on this regulator, I'll start to feel it. It's gonna start fighting. It's gonna be hard to pull in. Then it's time to come up and actually swap batteries. That's when I know I'm running out of batteries and the uh, generator, the, the compressor is not able to, to keep up. It's not able to, to fill the 1.6 gallon tank here. So let's see, I'm going to get on this side of my pool. So you're a little far away from the compressor and we can see everything that's going on. and I'll try to stay over on this side of the pool. Yeah, that should do it. Let me go turn the, the whole rig on. It's not too bad as far as silence goes. That's as loud as it gets. I'm going in with little goggles like this. If you've, been, if you've been diving for a while, you can learn how to not breathe through your nose. So I don't need to have a full on scuba mask. I like these actually better. So here goes. Oh yeah, it already shut off. It went from 100, it went from 90 PSI up to 135 like that. You could see how with those two three amp, amp, uh, hour batteries, 3000 milliamp hour batteries each, that thing everybody's telling me, you can run for about two hours, two hours of underwater snorkeling where you're beneath the surface and you get to stay down like 10 feet below the surface and stay down there looking through the weeds in the lakes, looking for northern pike and chasing the sunfish. I mean, just all that other stuff. And you don't have to worry about your back actually getting fried because you're constantly at the surface snorkeling. Instead, it's like snorkeling 10 feet down, how cool is that? All right, here goes. I'm gonna slip in on the other side to camera right so that I don't make a splash.
Here goes the first test. I'm going to face it towards me so I can look like this every once in a while. So far so good. This is amazing. This is excellent. I don't even taste any bad residue because it's oilless. How cool is that? I'm going to go down just as a test. I'm going to literally stay on the surface. I don't have a weight belt, so I'm not neutrally buoyant. I can't get down on the bottom like I want. I gotta, I'm going to have to get a weight belt. Wow. But um, I'm going to go down and count 200 breaths. Now 100, for the sake of the camera. I'm gonna go down and count 100 breaths. You're gonna watch 100, and then we're gonna come back up.
That was amazing. I pulled myself down to the bottom of my pool. It's like four feet deep. But what did I learn? I need a weight belt. The whole system works fantastic. What I was worried about was the smell of residue. If anything, I just feel your regular dryness that you get from any kind of diving. But when I'm down below the water, I can't even hear that thing when it's running. And I'm only six feet away from it and I couldn't hear it. So what I know I need, and I, this was a precaution, I went out and bought at first a 25 a 25 foot coiled quarter inch, uh, I think it's 200 PSI pressure hose. That needs to be 50 feet and coiled um, because the only time this gets to 25 feet is if you actually stretch it out. And it's no fun pulling that kind of tension. You want it zero tension, which means I need 50 feet. I need the, the 50 foot hose. I'll happily buy that. That hose was only seven bucks. So a 50 footer, it's only going to cost me about $15. It's nothing. The compressor, $159 without the batteries. The batteries run <coughs> about 40 bucks a piece. So $159 plus $80 is about $239. Plus the hose is going to be about $15. Call it $240, $255. We're at $255 so far. And a regulator, that little, four, that little second stage regulator, I got it for $30 on Amazon. 255 plus 30, 280, not even $300. And I have a complete system. The only thing that I need the only thing that's missing, I need a float. I need a, some kind of a, a raft to put it in. A raft and maybe, just as a precaution, uh, some kind of a cooler. Put it in a cooler and run a cable out, run a hose out for the air. Try to make it as waterproof as possible so it waves splashing on the on your little dinghy on your little inner tube or whatever you know it doesn't get inside the system but man fantastic one oh, i need a weight belt I, i'm I, uh, you need to get down you get down to a certain pressure maybe 20 feet and an interesting thing happens your body starts to compress and you actually become neutrally buoyant but if you start to go above that a little bit your fat swells up again and then you start to shoot to the surface you know you don't want that make your ears pop but what a fantastic what a fantastic experiment the, the, this thing works so well I'm just tickled to death at the idea of being able to go snorkeling 10 feet below the surface of the water for several hours and when I'm done if I want to go in spring for two more $40 batteries pop two more batteries and go right back out there's no going and finding a dive shop. There's no going and getting your tank checked. There's no going and getting, having to get charged to go and get the tank, uh, you know, uh, uh, filled up again. And the weight of the tanks, I mean, they're, they're, they're 40, 45, 50 pounds. This thing goes inside a dinghy and I don't get to feel it. The only other thing I can think of is, I know there's some kind of a strap that you can buy for right here, like you, so that you kind of wear it on your back a little bit. But... Otherwise, this system completely rocks. Watch for more episodes where I try to take this rig out to mm, Lake Geneva or to one of the quarries in the area and try to go diving. But if I'm going to go diving down, it's, it's really easy to tell that if I'm going to go diving um, below 10 or 15 feet, I'm going to hit at least one thermal climb where the temperature is going to drop 10 degrees. I'm going to need to get at least a 2 millimeter, 3, 4 millimeter at least a shorty that goes, you know, catches my shoulders uh, down to my thighs. I'm going to need to keep my core warm or I won't be able to stay down very long. Ha! What a cool system this turned out to be. Absolutely fantastic. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Voltland Outdoors. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. I don't beg you for anything like that. If you like his stuff, what I do, subscribe. But I'm, I just like doing it and hope you guys enjoy it too. We'll see you out there.